God saw a king. Goliath saw a dog. God saw a warrior. It's important to allow God to define who we are in our lives. And some scriptures that I found that goes along with that is 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 that says, I am born again, spiritually transformed, renewed, and set apart for God's purpose through the living and everlasting word of God. It's his word in our life that defines who we are. And then another one that I thought was good is also found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It says, I am chosen by God, not by man, but by God, who called me out of the darkness of sin and into the light and life of Christ, so I can proclaim the excellence and greatness of who he is. And that's what we're here to do, is to tell the world about Jesus, the one that saved our lives, that brought us out of that darkness and gave us a new hope in him. And how did he do that? By sacrificing his all so that one day I too can have that gift of eternal life. So I encourage you, look into the word, look into what God says, who we are and who we need to be. And allow that to define the person that you are each and every day of your life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight before we get started. And let's just allow him to be in control of tonight's service and everything that we do tonight. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be here in your house tonight. Father, we pray that you would be here with us tonight. Allow your spirit to move, Lord, just to let everything that's done here tonight glorify you, Lord. Let us say or do nothing, Lord, unless it is led by your spirit. Father, we pr pray for our youth as they are having their study groups tonight. And, Lord, that you would be with them, Lord, and continuing to lead and guide and direct their lives as well, Father. And, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity to be here in your house. Father, we pray you would continue to heal our land and be with all those that are sick in body, Father God, and all those that are hurting or lost without you. We pray that they would open your word and that they can make a way in their life. Yes, Father. And all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight we're going to do things a little different. Um, Brother Nick is traveling to be with his family. And uh, so we're going to just do a couple of hymnals. Sister Kelly has agreed to help me. So most everyone should know these. If, if you were here, I'd tell you to turn to page 368 in your red back. But we're going to start tonight with nothing but the blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can 
lives. That's right. That's what makes the difference. Yes, hallelujah. Um, the last song we're going to sing is Are You Washed in the Blood? And so if you do have a hymnal at home, it's on page 177. And so we'll, we'll do these verses together. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood in the slow-cleansing blood? Though I walk in the midst of trouble, 
Thou wilt revive me. Thou wilt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. That's all of them, right? Yep, that's verse 8. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord together in prayer this morning, or this evening. Father, God, we give you glory, we give you praise and honor and glory. I thank you for the word, I thank you for the worship, I thank you for all that is done, and I thank you, Father God, for every person that's here. I thank you for every person that's getting to watch, Lord God, I pray today that they might be getting to hear at some, at some point in time. God, I pray that in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against us this day shall prosper. We continue to bind and rebuke every hindering spirit and every demonic force that wants to come against us, and we simply plead the blood of Jesus, that precious blood of Jesus over this service tonight and over every soul, Lord God, over every church member, over every family member, Father God, I pray. God, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that as we pray a, a specific prayer, Father God, for Brother Randy Coleman, God, we continue to pray for him. We continue to pray for deliverance, for restoration, for a speedy recovery and healing in his mind, body, soul, and spirit. We pray that conviction would grip his heart and that, Father God, that he'd be saved before it's everlasting and eternally too late. God, we pray for all those that are sick and, and afflicted, those in nursing homes and the hospitals, those that are, that, that are in the shut-ins, Father God, that can't get out, Lord God. We pray that you will provide for them and help them. And, and Lord, and I just pray for all the nurses and the doctors, Father God, for all of our rescue squad workers and ambulances, Father God, all of our, our local police officers, Father God. We just ask you to, to minister and help these men and women, Father God, as they serve us, Father. God, we just pray that you will make a way for them like there is no other way, Father. God, we just praise you for all things, and we give you the glory and the honor of this praise uh, that's due unto your holy name. For it's all these things we ask and pray tonight in Jesus' holy, sweet, precious name. Amen and amen. Tonight, as we begin to look at Psalms 138, uh, as I read it, amen, and just a few things that spoke to me was this. That here in the Psalms, we find some very interesting points that I want to bring out tonight that are very uh, foundational to who we are and the answers that we seek after and what are those answers that you might ask? And that is simply the will of God. Amen. It is the will of God. These are the answers. These are the questions, I should say, uh, that truly, amen, we need to be asking. Uh, Lord, what is truly the will of, uh, of God in my life? Amen. And, and I know, praise God, that that is to, to seek God, to, to love God, amen, to serve God, amen, to win souls, amen, to, to live a life that is pleasing unto Him. This is the will of God, amen. And it all starts with praise and worship. And you can, uh, you, can, you can go back into verse 1 and you can find that out because he goes back to verse 1 and he says this. He says, I will praise you with my whole heart. He says, before the gods will I sing praise unto you. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. And so we know that it's all about praise and worship. And this is what the psalmist was trying to say. The psalmist made this declaration and he made a point to say, I will, I will, I will. I will praise you and I will worship you and give you thanks for all you are and all you have done. I think that if we as a people, that if we truly want to uh, to come out, uh, I should say, of the shell of, a, of the life that we seem to be living in. If you're having troubles, trials, tribulations, heartaches, heartbreaks, uh, pain, suffering, distress, anxiety, um, well, whatever the complications might be in your life, the stress that's mounting up uh, just because of living everyday life, I can promise you that if you will begin to follow, amen, the, 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 the procedure, amen, that, that the psalmist has outlined here in Psalms 138, I promise you, amen, that God is faithful. He will show up and he will show out in your life, praise God, and, and, and he will minister to you right where you are uh, if, if you begin to, to follow this, this plan that God has put into place. And what is that plan? That is a plan to worship, a plan to, to give God glory, give God praise in the midst of everything else, amen. It's, it, it's, that is where we've got to get our, our foundational mindset at is, is that, God, that no matter what, no matter what, God, I'm going to worship you, I'm going to praise you, and I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. And this is truly what it's all about and what we have to get into our minds. We know, amen, that from John chapter 4 and verse 23, we know that God is looking for true worshipers. That's what the, uh, the Samaritan woman told uh, Jesus there at the well. Uh, when she met Jesus at the well, the Lord told her, he said, he said you, you don't know what you seek if you don't know what you worship. And, and he told him, but there's coming a day when the true worshipers shall arise and that they will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And, and the, the Bible goes on and it says, and the Father seeketh such. 
He seeketh those, amen, to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so, if, uh, again, if we know that God is looking for worshipers, he's looking for somebody to worship him, amen, I'm going to raise my hand and I'm going to say, God, look no further than me because I'm going to worship you. I'm going to lift up my hands and I'm going to cry holy unto you. I'm going to praise your holy name. And I'm going to sing songs. I'm going to sing songs without music. I'm going to sing songs with music. I'm going to sing a song from my heart, amen. I'm going to sing a song in my mind, amen. I'm going to praise you and that's what God is looking for. And when we do that, there is a shift. There's a shift that begins to take place on the inside of us that takes our eyes off of, off of our circumstances, amen, and puts them on Him. And that is where we want to be. We will find peace. We will find strength. We will find everything that we need in that particular time. Um, and those who worship with all that they have, with their spirit, this is important, with their spirit leading them into worship, leading them to worship. Uh, there's sometimes, and this is what I've already said, that our flesh, amen, our flesh will not want to worship. Our flesh will, will want to be thinking about the things of the outside, the things of the world, and, and, and so forth and so on. But it's the spirit, amen, that wants to lead us into worship. And, and how exactly do I do that? It's, it's not being concerned about anything but pleasing the Father. That's what it's about in my worship. I'm going to come to church, or I'm going to ride in my car, or I'm going to sit at the house, or, or I'm going to go out in the woods, or whatever, wherever, or whatever that you have to do, amen, for you to not be concerned about anything else, but you just pull up a chair, and you take a moment, and you say, Lord, I'm just going to give you praise today. I'm just going to give you glory, and I'm going to give you honor, and I'm going to worship you for who you are. I'm going to thank you. Just sit down and talk to him, amen, and just tell him how much you love him, how much you thank him for saving your soul, for delivering you from the devil's hell, amen, and making a way where there was no other way. Because that, that's what worship is. We're just acknowledging, praise God, who he is. He goes on in the scripture, he, he goes on to say this, that uh, he, he goes on to say that why he will worship him in the psalmist. He says, why I'm going to worship you. In verse 2, he says, I will worship towards your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and for your truth. This is something that we got to see right here. He says, I'm going to worship you for your loving kindness and for your truth. This is something that you and I can worship God with as well. That we can sit down and we can say, Lord, I worship you because you are God. You are truth. You are the way, the truth, and the light. In John chapter 14, we know this to be the, to be the truth because of your loving kindness, your truth. You're holy. Amen. You are holy and your word is holy. So that's why I'm going to worship you. And also know this, that the word... And he goes on to say this, For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name, in verse 2. So I'm going to read this out of also the, the Message Bible and the New Living Translation here at the end of verse 2. Out of, the, out of the New Living Translation, it says it this way, I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. For your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. So you, you're going to have to let that one sink in for just a minute. Out of the Message Bible, it says it this way. He says, I kneel and worship facing your holy temple and say it again. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Most holy is your name. Most holy is your word. Praise God. And, I, and, and that's what I want to stay right here for just a moment on and say this. Amen. Praise God. There is no other name greater than that of Jesus Christ. And the word is backed up by his name. Amen. Praise God, this is what we've got to understand. When you've, got, when, when, when you've got everything that you are, amen, and the Word of God being backed up, the Word of God is being, is, is being backed up, amen, by God Himself, amen, by His name. Think about that. Think about who He is for just a minute, amen. It's, it's, it's that authority. It's power, praise God. And that's who he is. And he says, he says, I'm God and I'm backing up my word, amen. You don't have to worry that God's word is not going to come to pass. It's not going to come to fruition. Because it will come to pass. It will accomplish, amen. That's what it's been sent to do. Praise God. And, and, and why is it going to accomplish? Because he's backing it up, amen. He's backing up his word. He goes on to say, uh, uh, going on down into verse 3, he says, when you cry, he will answer he says, in the day when I cried, you answered me, and you strengthened me with strength in my soul. And, and this, is, this is so good. Verse 3 tells of this truth, along with Psalms chapter 3, Psalms chapter 120, and also Psalms 142. When we cry, he hears and answers on our behalf, and the word says that he strengthened our soul. 
Amen. In Psalms chapter 3, in Psalms chapter 40, and also in Psalms chapter 142, this is, it's very famous uh, for, for the psalmist to start out and say, in when the day I cried, or, or when I cried unto you, or, or he starts off that way in those particular verses, and then he begins to lay out this foundational groundwork, amen, of, of, of why I cried, and then God begins to speak, and God begins to answer when, when we cry, he hears and answers, praise God. It's a, he is moving on our behalf. And the word says that he strengthened our souls. I don't know about nobody else, but I am thankful to know, amen, that when I have been in times of desperation, that I have been in times of, of, of dire need, amen, praise God, and I need the word from the Lord, praise God. When you get serious, praise God, and you get down, uh, whether you kneel down, whether you lay down, whether you're sitting up, well, it doesn't matter. As long as when you cry out, you're crying out with all of your heart, amen. The Bible says that he will hear us, praise God. The word says that while we were yet speaking, amen, he will move and he will hear and he will answer. So praise God again. God is backing up his word with whom he is, amen, and we know that God cannot fail. And so for this, amen, I stand thankful because just like this morning when he strengthened my spirit, amen, praise God, I know he can do the same for, for somebody else as well. The next thing I want to point out is this, the kings of the earth. Kings of the earth, the Bible says in verse 4. If you look at verse 4, it says, All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord. That's in capital words, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Uh, kings of the earth hear his words and praise him. Even though, now you've got to get this because, because he goes on into verse 5 and he says this. Yea, they shall sing in the way of in the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. I think it might be verse 6, or maybe I've already missed it. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly, but the proud he knoweth afar off. Very important right here. Even though, as the Bible says right here, that the Lord be high, amen, that he is never too far from you. Even though he sits high on his throne, he is never, ever, ever, praise God, out of reach for you and for me. This is a promise. How do you know that? Because the Word of God tells me this, amen. Again, it goes back to saying, praise God, if he, he says that a humble, he says a, 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 a contrite, a broken spirit and a humble heart, he says, I will in no wise cast aside. He says that I will hear you, amen, when you come to me in this condition. And this, is, again, is a promise of God. When we find ourselves in the midst of trouble, he will revive me. I believe it's in verse 7. He begins to talk about this. When we find ourselves in the midst of trouble, he will revive me. In Psalms chapter 23, uh, along about verse 4, we know that the Bible says, He gave though a walk through the, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me, praise God. When we find ourselves in the midst of trouble, he will revive me. We don't have to fear when the Lord is with us. I am glad to know that with one hand he smites the enemy, and with the other hand he is reaching for me. Why, why, do, you throw, why do you bring that out? Because I keep reading, amen, in Psalms 138 and verse 7, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, that will revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. So what does that look like? That means that, that when I'm in distress and I'm in trouble, and I begin to call out on the name of the Lord, and the Bible says that when I begin to call out on the name of the Lord, amen, the Bible says that he shall save me. Praise God. Not only do I believe that is for my salvation, but I also believe that is out of troubles and trials and tribulations. Amen. And I know that sometimes we're going to go, we're going to go through some things. Amen. But praise God, you don't know what God has spared you from. Amen. Praise God. Unless he reveals it to you, you will never know. Amen. Of how bad it could have been. Praise God. And so, but I know this, that, that when I have called to him in prayer, amen, I know that, that, that it would look like that, that on this hand, amen, that he is pushing back the forces of darkness that are trying to come against me, or, or, or he is smiting the enemy, amen, he is keeping them at bay, and then, then on this hand, amen, he is reaching for me, and he is taking me, and he is pulling me in, and it takes me to the book of Psalms, chapter 91, amen, and then it tells me that he who dwells in the secret place, amen, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, praise God. That's what I begin to think of when I begin to think of this particular scripture. And so to know, amen, uh, praise God, that God has us, amen. The Bible says that, 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 that God will begin to gather us, amen, as, as a hen does her little chickens, praise God, her little baby chicks, amen, and begins to, to, to bring them in under safety, praise God. I'm so thankful for that word, amen. I'm so thankful to know, amen, that if God be for us, who can be against us, amen? Uh, praise the Lord. 
we go on and he keeps, he keeps going like this and he says it this way. He says, he will perfect that which concerns me. Uh, you find out there, and I was thinking, I think I got ahead of myself in that. I think that's back in verse 6, I believe it is, but regardless, amen. Uh, to know this, amen, that if he will perfect that which concerns me, that he's going to, he's going to take care, amen, of the concerns that I have. That means, amen, that, that I can make, the Bible says, that uh, to pray without ceasing, to, to make your petitions, your requests known unto God, amen, and, and, and that he will answer. He will perfect that which concerns me. He is concerned for me, amen, when I am concerned about something. Praise God. It doesn't matter what we're concerned about, praise God, church. But he says that if you are concerned about it, amen, then I'm concerned about it. Now, I just, I just, I just can't help but think. Now, we know that the Bible teaches us this. The Bible uh, uh, tells us, amen, that, that, that we have a heavenly Father, amen, from whereby that we can cry, Abba, Father. I think of the perfect Father. I think of that heavenly, loving Father. And then, and then I think of a good earthly Father. Uh, that, that when something is on your child's mind, amen, that something is troubling them or something is bothering them, that, that you will go to them, amen, and if it is concerning to them, praise God, it needs to be concerning to the parents, praise God. And that's what a, that's what a loving earthly father will do when their child is concerned. It's going to bring concern on them, and you're going to do your best to help that child and to take care of that child, amen, and, and to see what's taking place. And God the Father is no different, amen. He is concerned about what we're concerned about. He cares what we cares about, amen. And this is the Word of God. This is what changes us. And when we get that mindset, amen, to know, amen, that God is a loving God. Yes, He. the Bible says it is a fearful thing, amen, to fall into the hands, amen, of, 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 of this. I, don't, I can't remember that scripture just exactly the way that it is, amen. But but, but it also know this, that, amen, that, that, that He is a God to be feared, amen, to be respected and to be revered uh, because of who He is. But at the same time, Amen. It is not in, in, in a fear of, of, of being afraid, so to speak. Amen. Because I serve God without fear. Amen. It's not fear. I'm not fear motivated to serve God. I'm love motivated to serve God. Amen. The Bible tells me, amen, that, that while I was yet a sinner, that Christ died for me. So I know that he loved me, amen, even in the worst state that I was. So when I gave my life to him, it wasn't for, for fear, praise God. I gave my life to him, yes, because I want to go to heaven and I don't want to go to hell. And I accept Jesus as my Savior and I serve him because I love him, amen. Praise God. That's what we do, and he's concerned for us, praise the Lord. That's why when you begin to cry out, amen, he answers. This promise, the promise stands true that he endures forever. In verse 8, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. There it is, I couldn't see it earlier. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. As I read this scripture today, and as I begin to look at this and, and just continue, I just... Focused my mind just for a moment on this verse. And as, as I read this, the psalmist reminds us of who he is. Now, now is he reminding us of, of who the psalmist is? Not for us, but for God's sake. Because the psalmist is reminding God of who he is. Not who God is, but who the psalmist is. What do you mean? If you, if you read this really carefully, and then if you look at some other translations and you see, he says, For, Forsake not the works of thine own hands, meaning God's hands. If you know the word and you know the scripture, the Bible says, amen, that we were formed, that God formed us, amen, out of the dust of the ground, that he made man in his image. So praise God, I am made of God, amen. And if I am made of him, I am a work of his hands, praise the Lord. And the Bible says here, he says, forsake not the works of your own hands. He says, that means don't forget me, amen. I'm just reminding you, Father God, uh, that I'm yours. Praise God. Sometimes I think we need to remind ourselves and we also need to remind God, hey, I'm yours. I know you know that I'm yours, but I just want to make sure that you know that I know that you know, praise God, that I'm yours. And then sometimes we need to hear that. We need to get that in our mindset, amen, that we don't forget, that, our, that this body doesn't forget whose it is and whose it belongs to. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been bought, praise God, and paid for with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. 
He says, I'm yours. You made me. Don't quit on me now. That's what a lot of people think. And I believe that this is a word for somebody tonight. I know that, like I said, that it strengthened my soul and my spirit this morning. Amen. Uh, that we get into this place. We get into a mindset. Uh, and, and we battle this fleshly mind of ours. Amen. And, and we get into these, uh, in, whether it's depression, anxiety, stress, whatever that it is, it begins to try to push us into a into a cold, dark corner somewhere, amen, in the, in the unknown universe. Uh, the word the enemy wants us to believe that, that God doesn't see us anymore, that God doesn't hear us anymore, that we're so far from God that we can't be found anymore, whatever the situation is, that God has forgotten us, uh, and, and, and so forth and so on. Uh, I'm here to tell you tonight, praise the Lord, uh, that, that God has not forgotten you, that God has not quit on you. I can assure you tonight, church, that the Lord will not. I repeat that he will not quit on you. His word says in the book of Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. I'm going to let Brother Allen pull that up on the screen for me tonight. I want to make sure that I do quote it correctly. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 6. Being confident. This is, this is, this is where you're at. If you're at home tonight, if you're listening to this, hearing to this, watching this, whatever you're doing. Make sure that you take a highlighter. Make sure that you take a highlighter, a pen, a sharpie, something, and you underline or you highlight being confident. Being confident. We must be confident of this very thing. And what is that very thing? Let's keep reading. That he which has begun a good work in you will perform it, amen, until the day of Jesus Christ. That means that what he started, amen, in you, he's not going to quit it. He's not going to stop it, praise God. He is not going to quit on you. He is not going to give up on you. Amen. He says, I'm going to continue, amen, with what I've started in you until the day of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That means until you draw your life and final breath and you leave this earth, amen, where the trumpet sounds and all of a sudden, amen, we're called up out of this place. Praise God. That's what the scripture means. So I'm here, I want to encourage you tonight, family. I want to make sure that you get this word. You go back and you look at, at, at Psalms chapter 138, verses 1 through 8. Amen. You read it for yourself. You study it for yourself. You see the truth in what I'm speaking to you tonight. Don't take my word for it. Amen. But get into the word and say, I want to make sure that what that preacher is telling me. I want to make sure what that teacher is telling me. I want to make sure that what that person says to me is lining up to the word of God. I can promise you everything that I've said to you tonight has come from Psalms chapter 138, verses 1 through 8. Find it for yourself, read it for yourself, and take hold of it for yourself because it won't do you any good, amen, if you just listen to it and you never apply it in your own life. We must, as individuals, as men and women of God, as children of God, we must take up our sword, amen. We must examine it. We must, praise God, go through it, uh, uh, mark it, highlight it, read it, let it soak in, meditate on it, amen. And apply it, praise God, in our lives. And when we do that, praise God, just like I know that God did for me this morning. Amen. As I cried out last night and as I cried out this morning, amen, as me and the wife prayed together this morning, amen, then, then uh, two hours later, praise God, it was just about two hours later, amen, that God began to speak. And I am thankful for that promise. I am thankful to know that he hears us when we pray, amen, that when we get serious and we cry out to God, the word says I'm there. So I thank you tonight, amen. I pray that somebody has received something, praise God, of this, of Psalms chapter 138, amen. I pray that you have been fed. I pray that you that you have received it, praise God, and that you will begin to apply it in your own life, amen. And, and take this word and share it with somebody, amen. If it touched you, praise God, uh, 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 make a comment, amen. Leave us something. Give us some information, praise God, to know that it's touched your heart and your life, amen. And then when you begin to spread it out and you tell other people, make sure you put that in there as well. Friday night, uh, gotta love Friday night. I'm gonna tell you about Friday night again, praise the Lord. Don't forget about this coming Friday night. Family, make sure you get you everything ready, get everything done, get supper out of the way, get everything situated, amen, because the puppets will be back in town, amen, they're going to be back upstairs, praise God, uh, worshiping, amen, praising God, amen, showing all the little kids, praise God, and the adults alike, amen, how to praise God. If you don't know how to praise God, amen, you need to be here, uh, be tuning in on Friday night, praise God, uh, to see the children's church puppets, amen, up here praising and worshiping God and having a great time, amen, and with that is another good word, praise God. It's another good word coming, amen, from, from our children's church pastor, Sister Kim, amen, as, as she leads us, amen, in that, praise God, so tune in, amen, Friday night, 
7 o'clock, praise God. And we'll make sure to push this out on Facebook and, uh, and our YouTube channel. Make sure that you've got there. And also our, uh, our um, website. Make sure that you're checking it out there. Staying up to date on all of our information. Praise God. So, family, we love you. We thank you. Also, this coming Sunday, we will be in the house. Amen. Here in the house. Praise God. I'm so excited. Amen. So, family members, make sure that you pay attention. We will be here in the house. Service will be at the uh, same time, right? 1045. Our service will still begin at 1045. So, make sure that you're here at 1045. Amen. Uh, don't show up at 11 o'clock, amen, and be like, hey, y'all already got started. Yeah, we're starting at 1045. Make sure you get that, okay, 1045. Uh, I love you, each and every one, amen. I look forward to seeing everybody Friday night at 7 and also at uh, in person, amen, Sunday morning at 1045 right here. God bless you. We love you. And until then, have a great day.